We're back for another week of Healthy Thriving Family After Divorce. Stephanie Dobson is with us. Stephanie is a lawyer and mediator with Hank and Divorce Law and Mediation here in Lloydminster. Stephanie, thanks for joining us once again. Yeah, thanks for having me as always, Stacey. Well, it's the beginning of a new month, so we are going to pick a new subject for this month Mm -hmm. to talk about and expand on as we go. And this time it's child support. A lot can be said about this. There's so many Mm -hmm. different things uh, that go with this. So First of all, let's talk about a high level view of how child support actually works. Yeah, and you're right, Stacey, we could we could talk about this probably for three months and have enough content. And so just help people to understand um, how it works. Um, So the the first thing that we can sort of um, um, comment on, I suppose, is I the way I start by explaining it is we've got two categories. So we've got base support and then we've got the extras. All of it falls under the child support guidelines, and we're going to talk about that uh, more in a a little bit later today. But when we talk about base support, that's the monthly support that a lot of times when people say, you know, I receive $900 a month in child support, or I pay $1,800 a month in child support, that's usually they're talking about base support. That is intended to cover things like food, clothing, and shelter. So we'll call that the basics. Then there's the category of what we call the extras. So people sometimes know of those as special expenses. They might call them section seven expenses. That's because it actually falls under section seven of the child support guidelines. So that's specifically the extras. We're gonna follow up with that a little bit more detail um, next week, but under that section, parents will share certain categories of expenses. So there's um, the various categories that parents will share based on their income levels. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, well, when it comes to base support, Stephanie, how is that calculated? Sure. So as I mentioned, we look at um, the child support guidelines to wait to calculate all child support. So if you're living in Saskatchewan, or if you're uh, an unmarried, or if you're married and living in any province, we use what's called the federal child support guidelines. If you're unmarried and you're living in Alberta, we use the Alberta Child Support Guidelines. So there's not many um, differences between the between the two, but there is that technicality. So when we're looking at base support, there's four components to base support. So the first thing, probably the most complicated one, is what is the income of the paying parent? Second, the province of residence of the paying parent. So that one's easy. You know, where, where do you claim on your taxes? The number of children that you're paying support for. And then number four is the parenting arrangements or the schedule that you keep between the two parents. When it comes to income, Stephanie, uh, how is that uh, worked out? Well, of course, that's the most complicated part. So we do use the child support guidelines, of course. Um, if a, if someone is a T4 income earner, so you, you're employed as an employee in a, in a company, it can be very, very simple. We take their T4 income, which is going to be the income that they put onto their tax return, one line, and we look at the bottom, the bottom line of that. Where it can get really complicated is when a parent earns income from other sources. So things like business income, that could be your own proprietorship, that could be corporate income. They could be a farmer or a fisherman or a fisherwoman, <laughs> or somehow if their tax return doesn't show their full income earning potential, they may earn non-taxable income or um, or, or cash income. Um, in those cases, we need to look a little bit further than just the personal income tax returns to figure out where are they earning their income and how do we calculate that? So there's lots of people who use online support calculators and they're very accurate. So child support is calculated based on these formulas that are created under the guidelines. Um, it's It can be very effective if you can figure out what that income may be because you just plug that into the calculator and press calculate and out spits a number. But where income is more complicated, sometimes those calculators can be a bit misleading. One thing we've talked about in the past is just a schedule, basically, uh, in when it comes to mm-hmm. uh, scheduling for the, the support of the children. So uh, does that affect um, the support as well, the, the parenting schedule? Well, um, it 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 certainly does. There's three different ways that it uh, that scheduling can impact child support. So the first one is where there's one set of calculations that we do. It's under section three of the child support guidelines. And that's when children live primarily with one parent. So when I say primarily, the 
the child support guidelines actually puts that down to a, a calculation of percentage over the course of an entire year. So we're not just talking month by month, you know, where maybe it's a different schedule in the summer versus the school year, but we're talking about over the course of a year, the children reside with one parent for more than 60% of the time. Parent would have less than 40% of the time. Okay, so that's one calculation. That's under section three of the child support guidelines. Then there's another kind of calculation that happens when there's shared parenting. Now we're going to talk about the shared parenting child support in a completely different um, episode because of course that can get um, long-winded. But basically that's where each parent has at least 40% of the time. So with the kids, so that could be a 60, 40 division of time that could be 50, 50, 55, 45, but basically it's somewhat equal parenting time. So under that calculation, we actually do what's called a set off approach. So that means we take what one parent would pay to parent A would pay to parent B if parent B had the kids full time primarily and and vice versa. And then we take the difference between those two. So we'll talk about that in another episode. Of course, it gets complicated. But number three, we have what's called split parenting. So split parenting is when one child, one or more children lives with one parent, children lives with another parent. So then that's when the 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 children are split. And then the, the child support guidelines, of course, has a whole set of rules for them. All right, Stephanie. Well, lots of good information as usual, and we will continue this theme throughout the month. So thank yeah. you so much for joining me today, and we'll chat with you next week. Yeah, thanks, Stacey.